In this video, I'm discussing the 11th Texas Backgammon Championships with Bill Riles. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. My book, Backgammon Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. Uh, again, in this video. It's my pleasure to have my good friend Bill Riles from Texas. Welcome. Thank you for joining me, Bill. Well, thank you, Alex. Always nice to, to visit with you, and we appreciate this opportunity to uh, give some additional exposure to our tournament. So uh, yes, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. It's always a pleasure to uh, watch you on your streams. Uh, you and Tara are the king and queen of streaming, and I enjoy the uh, interactive chat feature but it's uh really nice to see your face in person well uh you know it's interesting we we love what we do in in that regard but it, it's kind of interesting to occasionally be in front of the camera or, or uh, you know as in this past weekend to uh, to be able to play in a tournament so uh right you know, it's uh we enjoy the game yes 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 it's uh Evident, of course. Um, so we'll discuss the Texas Backgammon Championship. This is the 11th uh, Texas Backgammon Championship. And it's going to be, what? what's the specific dates, please? That's uh, February 7th to the 11th. Um, so about a month away. Um, how time flies, you know? I mean, we had the first one in uh, 2013. So this would affect, would have been the 12th, but we lost uh 2021 right. we were actually uh yeah. we got our tournament in in 2020 the the pandemic kind of started just after us so we right. had uh, our 2020 tournament occurred but then we uh we missed 2021 so yeah. so you've been doing it since uh for for over 10 years now uh and it's it's in san antonio correct in san antonio um South Central Texas, uh, one of the foremost um, destination cities in the United States. Tremendous tourism and convention industry. And, um, you know, it, it's a delightful city. It's a very unique American city with uh, a lot of Spanish influence. It also, um, you know, it's a fairly large city. It surprises a lot of people how large San Antonio is. I think it's actually, and it's, uh, it's like the 11th largest city in the United States based on the population within the city limits, but it has, everything's focused downtown. So it's only one real business center, if you will, or where everything happens. You know, oftentimes a lot of cities, Houston being a primary example, that it's, it's a huge area and there are any number of I don't know, locales within the metropolitan area, which are almost like mini downtowns of themselves. And uh, San Antonio is unlike that. It's it's one central area all focused on downtown. Yes, I've been to San Antonio once for a medical conference, maybe 15 years ago or something. And it was it was a really enjoyable to go there. They have like the, the river walk there is just really fun. There's some historic places to see, like the Alamo. I know you're you're you live in the Houston in the Houston area. We correct? we live in Houston, but Tara grew up in San Antonio, so she's quite oh. familiar uh with San Antonio. And when we were you know, selecting where we were going to do our tournament, we wanted to make it a destination event where there were many things to see and do um, beyond just the backgammon tournament. So, uh, you know, downtown San Antonio with the Riverwalk and the Alamo and all the other things associated with it are uh, fills the bill well. I think that's uh, that makes your tournament very unique. I guess you're not allowed to say very unique. You're supposed to just say unique. It makes your tournament unique because most of the tournaments, it's like at a hotel near an airport, and you're there the whole time, and you might just go to the restaurant in the hotel. But at your tournament, there's so much more to do than just play backgammon, right? Yeah, it's just... Uh... And just steps outside the door, you know, within blocks, a couple of three blocks, there's a number of fine restaurants and uh, we're blocked from the Riverwalk, which uh, 
it's kind of interesting. A lot of people don't realize there's really scenic, beautiful area. And the river is actually about, I don't know for sure, but maybe 25 feet below street level. So all of the sidewalks and everything alongside it are again, 25 feet below uh, street level. So it's really kind of a lush, quiet environment in the middle of the city. You don't hear the traffic. You don't hear the, you know, the noise of the city. I know one player, uh, our first year a lady and I haven't seen her in tournaments in years, but she's from California. And, uh, she said she was just blown away by the whole city. <laughs> and she, she referred to the river walk, if I recall correctly, as an amusement park of restaurants. <laughs> and, uh, and it is, I mean, you can walk for, I don't know, probably a mile on either side and it's nothing, but you know, there's some shops, there's some hotel uh, frontage, but primarily there's restaurants and it's, uh, and they're, you know, are tour boats, little, Paddle, well, they're not paddle boats. They're actually motor boats, but you know, it might sit 20 or 30 people and they are running up and down and around on the river all the time and showing you the sights of the city. And it's, it's really a neat, uh, it's a neat experience. And, and that's what people like, you know, and again, the Alamo, there's a, a place called San Fernando cathedral. That is one of my favorites. It's just a few blocks from the, the Gunter hotel. And it's an, an old Spanish cathedral and uh, like on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, two or three times a night, they have this laser display on the facade of the cathedral. And it's a story of the history of San Antonio, more or less, in a musical and laser light displays on the facade. And it's really amazing to see. That's That's great. I think, you know... You look at these big tournaments, like recently in New York, or we had one in Los Angeles and Las Vegas are kind of like major cities with like large populations. And, you know, people can come from overseas because they're on the coast. But interestingly, San Antonio is not really that sort of a location. However, you manage to get such a high attendance at your tournaments. So what what is your magic? What do you do? How do you get so many people to attend? Well, I, I think it's it's several fold. One, you know, as we've been talking here a few minutes, to, we're really fortunate to have the downtown San Antonio location with so many things to see and do and, and what have you. And, um, you know, it's like I was talking to someone this past weekend up in New York and New York had some tremendous attendance, but, you know, and, and a lot of people from around the country and internationally, but they have a, you know, what's the metropolitan population of New York, 20 million, 25 million or something like that. They have a, a huge population um, base to, to pull from. So they have, you know, even in, they have this, uh, what do they call it? Advanced intermediate and beginner divisions or, or advanced beginner and beginner divisions. And they pull 70, 80 people into that. And, uh, you know, I was telling somebody, anybody that's coming to San Antonio to our tournament is coming for the tournament. There are no effectively no local players. So if they're coming to the tournament, they're coming to the tournament, <laughs> you know? So, uh, I think it's, um, uh, it's a beautiful venue. Uh, we have a great staff. We're kind of the, I like to think of it as the, I don't know, the home and birthplace or whatever of, of live streaming, because we do, we're known so much for the live streaming and, and, uh, we do so much at our tournament. We're going to have five live streams this year. And, uh, you know, someone can walk into the ballroom and, that one whole room over to the side is, you know, there's five streaming uh, stations. Each streaming station has a like 55 inch TV next to it that shows what's going on there. And if you walk behind, like, you know, where Tara and her streaming control center, I guess it's just stunning. I think I might've mentioned to you this past year, Petco come up one morning and, we were talking about that. And I said, well, come with me. And we walked behind there and and he's just like, geez, you know, he said, it's like an ESPN studio. Yeah. And, and it is, it's, it's just amazing. But, um, you know, so, uh, and we have a great staff. That's, that's another thing. Um, and it's a, a 
hugely international staff. So that, uh, you know, Jesper Carlson is our co-director. He's been with us five or six, seven years. Just no one's more capable. He's uh, very personable. I, we always marvel that within the first, say, after the first day of the tournament, and this is a five-day event. <laughs> so within the, after the first day, he knows the name of every person at the tournament and, you know, can interact with them and so forth. And, and people, they note that, they like that, that, you know, he recognizes them, he knows who they are, he'll talk to them, or whatever. And, um, you know, they just feel comfortable at the tournament. And that that's what we seek. Yeah, I think there there are a lot of things um, that are very interesting and unique. Unique, like as I said, the fact that you have like a location not by the airport. I, I've talked to a lot of tournament directors that say, you know, we need to have it near the airport so people can, you know, come in and they're right there. Maybe that was true in the past, but nowadays with all these taxis and Uber and Lyft, it's just so easy. They just take that and they get there. And San Antonio is not huge. There's not lots of traffic. So they have everything. It's like a whole resort within walking distance, right? Well, I, I think that's certainly true. And and you can compare that in certain regards to, um, you know, we're in Europe a lot and go to the, a lot of the big tournaments over there. And, and those tournaments are in some measure at some kind of destination type place, you know, be it the city or at a, you know, at a beach resort or, you know, like in Cyprus, Monte Carlo, right. Dubai, the Swedish open is going to be on the waterfront in Stockholm this year. They're all kind of like destination spots. They're not next to the airport, you know? And, uh, so again, you and I, we've talked about that and we share the, kind of the perspective. It's, I don't think that's nearly as important or nearly as the draw uh, sorts that it, it was at one time. I've heard the almost the exact same thing from two other people, Arda Fendikoglu and uh, Patrick Jabaley from yeah. Dubai. That said the, the, the same thing. And, and these are outstanding. And the other thing that you mentioned is the streaming. It's like you walk in there. It's almost like a Las Vegas sports book. And it's people don't realize. Maybe some of the tournament directors don't realize. But like when people come to a tournament and there's that much streaming, it's like an attraction. It, it That's one of the reasons people come to the tournament. Well, and, you know, a lot of people like the opportunity to perhaps be streamed if they – you know, are doing well or whatever, or some of the more prominent names are naturally going to get streamed anyway, but they, uh, you know, they want their families and their friends and maybe their fan clubs. And in some cases they want them to, uh, you know, to be able to watch them. And, uh, so it, it's kind of interesting. I know it, it was funny in, uh, in Las Vegas in September, uh, we were, we needed a match in a certain time slot. We were running two streams and I forget what was on the stream one, but on stream two, you know, we needed a match and it was on Sunday, I think. And we ended up putting uh, Candace and who was it? Manuel Perito in the consolation final on, on the stream. And initially when I approached Candace, she's like, Oh no, no, no. I don't want to, I don't want to be on the camera and I don't play that well and, and what have you. And uh, I said, no, it'll be great for you. You know, people don't expect to see Victor Askenazi. They, they know who you are and they know that this is a consolation in the intermediate, uh, you know, but I think it'd be great for you to get that exposure and so forth. And, and at the end of the day, I think she just loved it. and and she got, you know, the recognition and the exposure and all that I think translates into uh, interest in, in her tournament. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know she I likes think... to. She enjoys promoting her tournament when she's on your stream. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. So how so, did you uh, how how did you first get into the streaming thing? Well, we started from the very beginning. We and the first year or two, Ronnie Nunez, uh -huh. Justin's wife. 
did the streaming for us. And she was kind of the first well-versed at doing that. And, and again, we just thought that streaming would give us exposure and that people would, uh, recognize the tournament could identify with the tournament in certain regards. And, um, so that was just, a I don't know, a foundation corner of, of our tournament was streaming. We've always been known for streaming and we've gone from, I guess the first year or two, we had a single stream and, and we, or was it double right out of the gate? Okay. And then we've, you know, we've gone, we've had three streams last year. We had four streams this year. We're going to have five streams <laughs> and, uh, you know, people love that and they can, uh, you know, people can, uh, they got five matches to choose from, you know, I mean, if they've got a, you know, somebody they particularly like or a countryman or whatever, uh, they can choose between five matches and, uh, and they like that. Yeah, it's like being a kid in the candy store <laughs> in certain regards. And, uh, you know, and typically the big tournaments that we've done, uh, like this past year in, uh, Dubai and Monte Carlo, those were dual stream, uh, Rory's tournament in Chicago was three streams, Vegas was two streams. So, but, uh, you know, to run four and five streams, like we have last year and this year in San Antonio is pretty much unprecedented. So, uh, oh, all the, all the credit in the world to, to Tara, you know, and one of the things that allows us to do that is that we can drive to San Antonio. So we have a, right. a big rental truck that we can put all of our equipment in, which includes 11 large screen TVs Wow, <laughs> and, uh, you know, light boxes and speakers and just on and on and on and on. And, um, you know, it's, it's quite a show. I know, you know, somebody can, and I, I remember specifically several people three or four years ago when, uh, Cara Schultz came to the tournament the first time she walked in and she kind of looked over to the right and her, her eyes just got big as saucers, like, wow, <laughs> you know, that's just amazing. And uh, to a similar extent, uh, last year, John Perner of the USB Jeff came to the tournament and it was the same thing. He was just like, oh my God, you know, this is, uh, this is amazing. So, um, you know, again, we, as well known as we are with regard to streaming, uh, you know, all around the world, then we, we want to keep uh, San Antonio being at the forefront of streaming. <laughs> so, uh, there we are, you know, we've got, uh, Justin Noel is going to be doing the, uh, yes, the commentary this year. And, uh, we're bringing in, uh, Aviv Ziva from Israel who has done the uh, live transcription at Monte Carlo the last two years. And he's joining us, uh, doing the live transcription on stream one, which will be the commentated stream. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's special. That that's great. I I really enjoy the streams. I enjoy watching it. I enjoy the interactive feature. Uh, I think you're you're probably one of the few tournament directors who can appreciate the value of the streams because I've spoken with other people and they say things like. Well, it's not bringing me any revenue, so I can't afford to do it. But don't you feel like that's that's grown your tournament over the years at least in part yeah it's uh you know at a given year if you start we're going to start streaming you're not going to make any money out of it but you are going to uh your tournament's going to grow with time as a result of it and i think that's true that's been true rory's always been a big proponent of uh, streaming at his tournament uh you know last three or four years we've done um uh, Atlanta and, uh, you know, that tournament has experienced some great growth. And then you get, you know, you mentioned, uh, Arta and and, and Patrick Jabelli, who, uh, we've worked with quite a bit and, uh, you know, they, they just swear by streaming, <laughs> you know, I mean, Patrick Jabelli particularly, I mean, he's a real entrepreneurial visionary type backgammon uh, organizer and and so forth and you know there's a difference in uh, 
you know, some people are the visionary and this, that, and the other, but you know, they have all these grand ideas, but, but they never get them done. You know, Patrick is one that he has all these grand ideas and inspirational thoughts and how to do things. And then he carries them out. So, you know, and, and Mark Olson, yes, I was going to Carlo and galaxy is much of the same, uh, same token. And Mark just, uh, you know, he's big on streaming and he, he wants it. Uh, he wants it. That's when he took over the world championship a couple of years ago. And, you know, he, and he probably jokingly in some respects, but he said, you know, one of the first calls he made was to us. I want y'all to do the streaming. And, uh, you know, and we've done it the two years they've, um, they've run a tournament and we have already, uh, you know, made a deal to do it again this year and we'll do Dubai again this year. And, um, so it, it's, it's neat. And, and yes. I really think it adds significantly to, uh, to the tournament and the exposure. I mean, this year, like in Dubai, as an example, uh, and it's people just can't appreciate how much work we put into that, but oh, yeah. you know, the final being streamed at the top of the Burj Khalifa. I mean, right. Is that off the charts or what? <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> Yes, I it. know. I know. I, I think it does a lot, not only for the tournament itself, but it's a good exposure for backgammon in general because people find these on YouTube and you get more people into the game. So, yeah, congratulations. You know, it's interesting. I mean. and, and you and I have talked about this before, and I won't belabor it, but, you know, we're we go to various tournaments and even – you know, maybe in the airport going to a tournament or wherever and, and people recognize us all the time. Oh, I know you, yeah. you know, I watch all your videos. It was funny in New York this past weekend, I was standing there one evening talking to two guys and, uh, you know, just, we were talking basketball actually, and just kind of shooting the ball about it, several things. And this other guy comes walking by and he pauses and he turns back and he says, are you that commentator guy? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I, I do a lot of commentary. I recognized your voice. <laughs> you, know, so, <laughs> hey, you never know. Right. So you have a recognizable voice. And so, so does Larry Schiller. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we all have our, uh, attributes you know yeah it's it's great well thank you thank you very much for all of the work you do i know it's very hard it's it's a major production so uh congratulations i think one of the other things that makes your tournament unique is you always have it on the weekend of the super bowl with the super bowl party right yeah we have um you know several social events during during the week on friday night we typically have a uh, a player's dinner and, and this year there's, there's a little restaurant right across from, from the hotel, right across Houston street. Um, uh, the Mexican restaurant called Poblanos and, and people were over there continuously last year. I mean, it's great food, um, relatively inexpensive. It's very convenient. So Friday night this year, we have Poblanos completely reserved and, uh, you know, that's where our players dinner is this year. And, uh, and then on Saturday morning, we have breakfast tacos, complimentary breakfast tacos for, for everyone. And then of course, Sunday evening is this, the Super Bowl party, um, upstairs in a couple of suites, uh, overlooking the city. Um, it's catered by Pinkerton's barbecue, which is a renowned, uh, barbecue, um, restaurant, which is actually only maybe three blocks down the road, but, uh, they cater that. And, uh, you know, it's a great time at the end of the tournament for people to kick back and relax a little bit, socialize with each other, um, uh, you know, watch the ball game and, uh, you know, and we always try to, that's catered barbecue with all the sides, you know, slaw and I don't know, uh, jambalaya and mac and cheese and, I don't know what else, lots of things. <laughs> and, and also we try to, you know, within the, the entry, there's uh beer and wine and all this kind of stuff. And we always, uh, you know, try to accommodate some people who call us up, Hey, can we have Stella or Corona or whatever at the party? And, and I, some various IPAs and, 
and we uh, we try to accommodate them, you know. So that's uh, people like that kind of uh, attention and, and uh, recognition and and ability to socialize. Right. Your your southern hospitality is unparalleled. I talk to other tournament directors. You know, you do all these things, and I ask them why they don't do like dinners and this and that and they say simply they can't afford it it's really hard to to cover all the expenses i mean how do you manage to do all that i don't know i mean it's uh san antonio is affordable one thing it's it's right. not it's not new york city or la or chicago and, and i'm not or vegas i'm not knocking those places it's just uh you know, it's just a factor of life. The, the economy is in the cost of living in these various cities. Every director faces a different economy and market conditions and so forth. So, uh, you know, and and everyone will tell you, and, and we'll certainly tell you, you know, we're not in this to make money necessarily. No. You, you can't do it anyway. But we, uh, so we pretty much plow everything into the tournament. Uh, you know, we hope objectives to not lose money, but, uh, of course, but we, uh, you know, we want to make it a, a fun again, destination experience for all the players. And it's kind of like Tara and, and my contribution to the backgammon community. Yeah. You've contributed a lot, a lot. I mean, you did. I don't know why you're not in the Hall of Fame yourself, but you, you will be. You will be soon. One of the other things that you do that's unique to the tournaments is nowadays they have a lot of BMAB tournaments. And at your tournament, you have a BMAB with the UBC. And if I remember correctly, yours was one of the first tournaments who had the, I believe you called it the dual dual format, which is like the same as the UBC, right? Yeah, it's very similar to, to UBC now. Uh, our first couple of three years, we did the um, dual duel, and uh, you know it was everybody was in a in a given bracket, let's say on a center of a sheet, and you if you won the uh, the score based you know version of the of a match, you go out to the right side of the bracket. If you went on PR, you go out to the left side of the bracket. So I mean, you could go to either to both sides, or you could go to neither side. You know, what I mean? right. but then. Uh, you know, and then we played out the score base side to a to a winner and the PR base side to a winner, and then we brought the two back together. And uh, you know, there was a, a formula by which the the overall champion was determined. You know, the UBC uh, format is is similar in certain regards. It's uh, you know, you get points for for both winning a match on score and on PR. And, uh, you know, then you go down to, you know, a, a playoff bracket after that. Maybe it's a top four or top eight, whatever the case may be, and uh, and play it out similarly. So it's, a, you know, it's kind of a, you know, a lot of tournaments have the BMAB, which, which is fine. I mean, a lot of people really like it to have their matches recorded and and analyzed and, and what have you. You know, the UBC is a little bit of a, uh, BMAB on steroids, I guess. And, <laughs> you know, and it's interesting in in our case, you know, the BMAB and and they've um and all the props in the world to Bernhard Mayer with WBGF and Dimitri and Roberto and those associated with BMAB, and and they've gotten a much quicker turnarounds on the analyses of all these matches uh, over time. But at UBC, since it's in part PR based and as to how you advance in the tournament, um, we actually have uh, Mate Fair, who you may be familiar yes. with uh, from Hungary. He's got a group of guys uh, that work for him, and they're actually live transcribing all of our UBC matches from the live streams. So within you know, 10 or 15 minutes of the end of a round, we have all of the XG analyses. <laughs> and uh, so it's really pretty neat. I mean, the technological world that we live in today and, you know, has reduced the size of the world in so many respects. But, uh, you know, 
five live streams, live transcription from Europe of every one of them for the UBC. So uh, it, it's kind of neat. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. I know you, you and I are familiar with these things, but uh, we'll probably have some viewers that are not quite as familiar. But when you have these XG is the extreme gammon software that will analyze a match and it will give you a performance rating or PR tells you how well you performed and your error rates and things like that. So um, that's important too. So all the live streaming, the um, XG analysis and all of that. If that's not enough, you also are going to have your uh, Ace Point backgammon shop there for people to purchase things, right? Yeah, we'll have uh, quite a bit of representative merchandise from our shop at the tournament as well. So that, uh, you know, that's always uh, fun. People can pick up, uh, you know, baffle boxes, scoreboards dice we got thousands of pairs of dice uh you know all kinds of things we've clocks we've got uh, you and i were talking earlier that uh, you know we've got these new clock bags zippered padded clock bags that are made for the uh, zmf clocks and uh, those have become very popular we uh and i don't i guess we'll have at least one in san antonio at least for for display purposes zmf you know, traditionally has the prism shaped clock right. with the time on the beveled side. Well, now they also make uh, double sided clocks. So there's like beveled face on each side so that, uh, you know, people on, if they're standing around watching a match, uh, you know, oftentimes half of them can't see the time. Now, yeah. you, now you can. And those clocks are really neat too, Alex. You can program them with your phone so wow. i mean like if you were running a tournament and you had 20 i don't know what they exactly call them but the 20 double-sided zmf clocks right you can program this like on an iphone and then just go from clock to clock and scan the setting into the clock wow, so wow that's you don't amazing. have to set each clock you can just it, it'll um, read by scanning a phone and set the clocks so it's it's uh it's really pretty pretty neat uh you know and, and i mean there's there's you know some people prefer the simple clocks leap and this that and the other there then you go up to chronos and zmf and things of that nature and of course uh there's the tempest clock which uh you know where you use your phone and a and a kind of a the phone itself is a clock <laughs> and uh you know, the, the receptacle it sits in is kind of a toggle type mechanism. So yes. some people like the, uh, the Tempest clock. So it's neat to see all of these various, uh, you know, technological developments with regard to accessories. This new dual sided clock sounds like the scoreboards where you can see the score on both sides. Exactly. And I believe you have a new scoreboard, right? That's become popular. Yeah, we, you know, we've sold, uh, and we, these are cat gammon, um, uh, scorecard or scoreboards and any, a, a myriad of combinations of colors, but, uh, Tar and I had, uh, had them, um, make exclusively for us <laughs> theoretically. Now we'll see. <laughs> she said she wouldn't sell them to anybody else, but we have, uh, purple the the number sheets and all are purple with white uh, white numbers so they're kind of a a galaxy purple so they uh you know they a lot of people with various galaxy boards or galaxy uh, accessories or that are on galaxy a lot they they like the purple scoreboards so right um so good and the event is going to be like five days uh what are the different events and the formats of of the tournaments well it's five days the first day is exclusively when well, i say exclusively uh ubc usa uh will do some few little jackpots and things of, na of that nature if people aren't in the ubc that when i have something to do we'll <clears throat> we'll provide them something to do but then you know beyond that we have the full complement of typical tournaments we have uh you know the abt events of championship 
intermediate and novice. Uh, and those are all, um, three flight events. There's a, a, you know, an undefeated bracket, then progressive consolation, progressive last chance. And, uh, then we have various jackpots. We have four different levels of jackpots. We have, uh, what we call it, what is it? Texas jackpot, which is, you know, for, let's say week intermediates or something of that nature. We have a, a limited jackpot, which is probably lower level championship players and maybe higher level intermediate players. We have the master's jackpot, which, uh, you know, is a, a bit of a higher entry or championship level players. We had 64 players in our championship jackpot, our master's jackpot last year. And then we have a high roller jackpot for those who, uh, who want to, uh, you know, play from for some additional money. We try to accommodate them too. And those are all, uh, just a knockout type bracket. And, you know, if, if space allows it and time allows it, then, uh, you know, you, if you get knocked out, you can rebuy and, uh, what have you. So people at San Antonio and, and then we have all the, you know, speed gammon and seniors and blitzes and doubles and the full complement of things. So the idea is anyone can play as, as much or as little as they want to. And, uh, you know, if somebody wants to do nothing but play backgammon for four or five days, then we can accommodate them. You know, <laughs> you know, other people want to pace themselves a, a little better, maybe focus on a given event or two and, uh, you know, and then maybe go out and, you know, have some nice meals or, or visit the Alamo or stroll the river walk or, Go up there. I didn't mention earlier. There's another area called the Pearl District, uh, just a little bit north of where we are. That there's a place in there, and it's just it's developed. I mean, lots of restaurants and high end stores, and there's a hotel there called the Hotel Emma that was actually built. The name, the Pearl District. There was the Pearl Brewery. Was this old brewery that was in San Antonio? And they built this boutique hotel inside or within the original brewery buildings. And, uh, and I think it opened in 2017 and it was voted by a number of people or some organization as the best new hotel in the United States that year. And wow. it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. I laugh with people that, you know, you've, you've done well when you're, your hotel is a tourist attraction, right? I mean, a lot of people just want to go over there and see it. And, you know, the architecture is just, again, they built it inside this old brew house for a brewery. And uh, within some of the ballroom type spaces or the bar, as an example, I mean, there's there's all the old piping across the ceilings and, and vessels uh, that were in the brew house that uh, are incorporated within the... Uh, you know, within the architecture and it's, it's just a stunning hotel. And, uh, so we always encourage people to go up to the, uh, Pearl district. If they want, they can see the hotel Emma. There's fine, some really nice restaurants. There's a, a jazz club. There's just, you name it, they've got it. And, uh, it, it's really a neat place to visit. Yeah, that sounds Amazing. I mean, I'm excited for your tournament and you, you have so many, so many things you, you have your new shirts. Is that, is that your new shirt for the tournament? Yeah, this is one of the, the polo shirts. Uh, and, uh, again, this wasn't in my lap. I'd show you the back, which is really pretty neat. Tara designed this polo, but it was funny. Patrick Jabelli in uh, Dubai had these similar type shirts for staff and, and so forth. And, and we really liked those. So we got with, uh, contact from him. So we had these tar designed them. We had them made in Dubai by the same people that, uh, they made Patrick shirts and here we have them, you know, and next year they've been so well received. So many people like them and, and, um, we'll probably acquire many more next year, but what we'll do is we'll order them, you know, early in the year so that when we're in Dubai, we can pick them up and bring them back. And then we don't have <laughs> as much, uh, shipping expense and getting right shipping. right do you do you happen to sell them on your online store we we have a, we're going to have 
a few extra in uh, San Antonio. Okay. But, uh, you know, these, and they're very high quality polo shirts. They're like 50% cotton, 50% polyester. So they have a real nice feel to them. And a lot of embroidery and uh, I don't know what you would call it, painting, printing, print on them. And I mean, you can go on online and, um, you know, find similar shirts of one sort or another from from clothing manufacturers, you know, and and you'll pay a hundred bucks plus for a shirt like this. And, right. Uh, you know, we could get them made in uh, Dubai for 25 bucks. Uh, wow. Wow. And, That's uh, great. So uh, it's, uh, you know, but then it costs a lot to get them over here as well. So Right, uh, right. That's we, expensive. Um, okay. Well, so before we conclude, I wanted to go through a couple things here. Uh, like, okay, so let me, let me do this one. I wanted to show this position. Are you able to see the screen now? Yeah. Okay, good. So uh, in a lot of the videos, uh, we're talking with guests about like, you know, playing backgammon and things like that. So we go through some positions. This is just a position I picked out just for us to look at, not really to analyze, but this is from the, um, what does it say at the top? The Masters master jackpot final of last year between Boris Dektiar and Dana Nazarian. It was the last game of a 13 point match. And, uh, Dana was playing the white checkers at the bottom and Boris was playing the brown checkers at the top. And uh, Dana almost had him finished off, but he rolled a 3-1 in this position, left the shot. Boris hit it. I was watching the video. It was really exciting. Uh, oh, I'm sure that that game, I don't remember it specifically, but I'm sure it uh, with the structure and all the um, checkers to bring around, I'm sure uh, – Boris was able to contain that for some time now, whether he was, well, he obviously didn't win it because Dana won the event, but, um, you know, Dana fortunately had, I guess he 11 off before he got hit. So, uh, yeah, that's exciting. And this is kind of interesting. You know, this is, well, I guess this is a, an actual, um, rain graphic of our Texas, it is championship board. So we have, uh, you know, Jeffrey Parker board, such, such as you see here, although this is a graphic representation of it, but, uh, you know, it, it's become one of the more recognizable boards in the world, I guess, uh, you know, this, and, and we don't let them, Jeffrey Parker doesn't sell this board with the, Texas and Jeffrey Parker logos on it, but they, it has become a very popular color combination, um, you know, in their portfolio. And uh, Tara and I designed this. We like the understated colors, um, you know, the light playing field, the logos that are, you know, embossed gold, but they're real understated. So they don't jump out at you. And right. a lot of people don't like to play on a busy, colorful uh, board. Right. But, uh, you know, that's, that's a really, really neat, uh, board, yeah, you know, and, and another thing, and, and we've, uh, with this event, the master jackpot final, and this is actually the name, the Malcolm Davis masters jackpot. Right. Uh, and we have a, the champion gets a, the trophy is a bronze longhorn steer figurine. And, uh, that's become, well, we've given away 11 of them so far because the actual, um, 2021 tournament was, was held online. And, uh, so there've been 11 longhorn steer figurines given and 11 different champions and all of them are who's who back in. I mean, you get Michi Mochi, Victor, um, Ed Laughlin, Alfred Mamlet, Arkady Sinise, Steve Sachs, Bob Glass, Jonah Seewald, uh, Dana Nazarian, and I'm missing somebody, Roberto Litzenberger. And uh, just a, you know, stellar lineup. And, uh, you know, and that Longhorn figurine, which is pretty good size, it's about 12 inches long and eight or 10 inches high. I mean, that has become, and this is what we wanted 
um, you know, identifiable, recognizable trophy. You know, there was the crystal beaver in Chicago and, and different things. So we wanted this longhorn trophy and, uh, you know, I, I, I tell people and, and many would agree, uh, you know, it's perhaps one of the most recognizable and identifiable trophies in, in backgammon. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show is uh, the website for the tournament, and I'll share that here. Are you able to see that now? Yeah, we can see the website, and it is funny. You That's the San, Fer San Fernando Cathedral that happens to be on that uh, you know, there's kind of a slideshow behind right. the uh, yes the thing, and uh, but at the the website you can uh, this one you know this tar generated oh, all of this. That's the Alamo. That's the Alamo. That's part of the Riverwalk. This one. And there's San Fernando Cathedral, but you you can you know see the brochure. You can. Uh, uh, pre-register for the tournament you can uh, make hotel reservations it's got the schedule it's got uh, uh you know all kinds of things so and there of course is the brochure nice picture of me uh, and there you can barely see the the in that picture with dana and, and me the the longhorn that was uh oh uh, yeah when he won it last year so and then the lower part of that uh trio of pictures is jesper carlson our co-director from sweden who is just a magnificent part of our uh, tournament yeah let me uh oh and and tar's telling me that that picture of jesper was taking it taken at the hotel emma and and the center picture of that was uh part of the lobby of uh of the gunter hotel and it was uh -huh. it, it was built in 1909 um, here. So by American standards, it's it's quite old, but you can see the ornate uh, structure, which perhaps was uh, typical of, uh, you know, fine hotels in that era. And it's been completely renovated and that, you know, it's got all the modern conveniences and so forth and so on, but it is a designated historical structure. So they can't, they can't alter the architecture in any way. That's great. Let me uh, see if I can go back to the. Uh... OK, I'll uh, go through the rest of the, the website so people can look at yeah, it. You can uh, register, register the schedule, a uh, link to the shop, uh, various news and media, whatever. But, uh, you know, it's an all automated uh everything registration form and uh and the hotel oh this is separate okay okay yeah that's the uh okay the hotel and, uh, and the schedule. schedule would be this is a very very nicely done and professional website everything is very well, nice that's clean. uh Miss Tara, the streaming professional, is also a pretty good website designer also. <laughs> yeah. And these are some of the boards you can see. Super Bowl party. That's yeah. that's great. So it's uh it's quite an event. We're we're proud of it. Um we've been humbled by the support that we've gotten through the years from the backgammon community and uh yeah, so I think this is outstanding. Um, I've never been. I'd love to attend. It's a little bit difficult for me with uh, work and family, but I'm going to try to make it one of these times. Uh, everyone that goes there tells me how much they enjoy that tournament. And it's like I, I have people from overseas that come once to the United States a year, and they go to San Antonio. You would think they would go to like New York or Los Angeles or something. They go to yeah. We we have some of that this year. We're going to have a number of international players. Uh, geez, we've got like the three top Swedish players are coming: uh, Jorgen Grandstedt, Thomas Tinlin, and Roland Solin. We've got uh, two or three German players: Mario Kuhl, who was a yes. superstar at the World Championship this year. He he's going to be here. Looks like Jan Jakobowicz is going to come. He just, uh, he won the uh, Masters event in New York City last week. Uh, 
uh, and Michael Urban. So it's three Germans. We've got the uh, UK. We've got the what two best players in Canada, probably Ryan Robello and Michael Nayagu. But we've got people from Peru, Brazil, Mexico. Um, I'm probably forgetting some, but uh, uh, you know, it's quite an international event, and uh, and that's neat. That just adds to the flavor and texture of uh, and and cultural exchange of the uh, of the event. And and again, it's kind of interesting. You know, I remember even the first year that we had the tournament because, and we replaced on the calendar the tournament that had been in Santa Fe, uh, New Mexico, which was a a lovely location and venue. And uh, but as Ed uh, Bennett was getting on in years, then he backed off from that one, and we took that date in effect. And I know that uh, the first year, two people that immediately come to mind. You know, a lot of people weren't familiar with the city of San Antonio, you know, it, and they were thinking, well, it's another Santa Fe or something. And Santa Fe is a beautiful city, but it's much, much smaller. And I know that, uh, like on Sunday of that first year, two different instances, Neil Kazaros came by and then later Stefan Nunez, and, and both of them were like, wow, well, we didn't have, you know, I had no idea San Antonio was like this, you know. And, uh, and that's, that's carried on. So well, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I wanted to thank you for all of your work, congratulate you and wish you continued success at the tournament. Uh, I hope people that watch this are able to learn and attend the event. Do you have any final comments before we conclude the video, Bill? I don't know. We've covered a lot of ground, but, uh, you know, we, we think it's a, uh, it's a unique event. It's Tar and I's baby, I guess you would say. And, uh, we think it has a lot to offer people. It's a, a, a tremendous tournament, a great staff, tremendous location. Un unlike, um, most of the other tournaments you'll see in the United States, it's a beautiful, unique American city. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, anyone, I mean, I don't think, uh, we've ever had anybody come and say, Oh, I didn't like this place. They're, they're always marveling about, uh, San Antonio and the, you know, originally the Minger hotel, now the Gunter hotel and the river walk and the Alamo and on and on and on. Tars, she's standing over here now for just a bit. She said, we'll guarantee everyone will have a great time. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, I believe that. I've, I've never been, but every single person who's been there that I've spoken with has had a good time, and I'm sure they will continue to do so. So, again, the 11th Texas Backgammon Championships in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, please repeat the date for the audience. February 7th to 11th. Very yeah. good. Thank Super Bowl you. party the evening of the 11th. Super Bowl party. Thank you very much, Bill. It's always a pleasure to have you and Tara. I appreciate your time. And, and Guinness. Uh, and Guinness. Yeah, that's right. Your dog Guinness. Uh, and I hope to have you again on future videos. Uh, you two, uh, king and queen of streaming and outstanding in everything you do, have an open invitation to come back. Uh, I want to thank the audience for watching. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. Again, my book, Backgam and Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address will be in the description. Additionally, I will provide links to the Bills Tournament and the YouTube channel and his online store so you can find that there. I look forward to seeing everyone in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.